Hello, my name is Andy Nguyen Phan, and today we'll be discussing a 1967 experiment by Joanne Ravel that determines the role of EFT and EFG in amino acid tRNA binding and peptide bond formation. For those who have access to it, we'll be discussing figure 18.13 from the 5th edition of Molecular Biology by Robert Weaver. This video was made for MCDB 427, the Molecular Biology class at the University of Michigan. Let's begin. Before we discuss the details of the experiment, let's first establish some background regarding translation and the elongation mechanism. Translation is the process by which ribosomes use the information in mRNAs to synthesize proteins. In ribosomes, there are three different sites present. The A site is the site to which new amino acid tRNAs, except the first one, bind to. The P site is where a peptidyl tRNA is bound at the time a new amino acid tRNA enters the ribosome. And finally, the E site is the exit site to which deacylated tRNAs bind on the way out. Translation is comprised of three individual steps. Initiation, elongation, and termination. In this video, we'll focus mainly on the elongation component of the mechanism. Here's a general overview of the elongation mechanism. I understand that it's a bit overwhelming, so let's just take it step by step. First, we start with F-met tRNA binding to the ribosome at the P site to initiate translation. Then, the first step of elongation occurs. EFTU, along with GTP, binds amino acid tRNA to the ribosomal A site. Then, a peptidyl transferase forms a peptide bond between the peptide in the P site and the newly arrived amino acid tRNA in the A site, and therefore shifts it to the A site. And finally, EFG, along with GTP, translocates the growing peptidyl tRNA with its mRNA codon to the P site. The process repeats itself for however long the peptide extends. I want to further clarify the distinction between EFTU and EFTS, as it may get confusing. In the established model for binding amino acid tRNA to the ribosomes, an EFTU and GTP binary complex binds with amino acid tRNA to form a ternary complex. This complex binds to a ribosome with the occupied P site and an empty A site. Then, EFTS allows, allows for the exchange of GDP for GTP on EFTU to regenerate the binary complex. In short, EFTS recycles EFTU so it can function again. The first experiment by Ravel was one of the first to determine whether or not EFT was important for binding amino acid tRNA to ribosomes. In addition, it shed some light on the mechanism involved. For this experiment, 14C radio label phenylalanine tRNA was added to wash ribosomes in poly U. Then, EFT was added as the experimental condition. One small note about the EFT used, Ravel actually used an ammonium sulfate precipitate from, precip from proteins that came off salt washed ribosomes. The precipitate ended up being a single complex. As such, Ravel did not realize that EFT was actually two different proteins. Anyways, increasing concentrations of GTP were added to the reaction. Following that, the contents would be run through a nitrocellulose filter binding assay. Any labeled phenylalanine tRNA that bound to the ribosomes would stick to the filter. Any unbound phenylalanine tRNA would wash through. Moving on to the results, we have GTP concentration along the x-axis and bound phenylalanine tRNA on the y-axis. Ravel recorded without any EFT, there was a high background level of phenylalanine tRNA bound to the ribosomes, as demonstrated by the red line here. Even with increasing amounts of GTP, there, were no, there was no observed change in binding. On the other hand, in the presence of EFT, we observe increases in tRNA binding accompanying the increases in GTP concentration, as demonstrated by the blue line here. By adding more GTP, more phenylalanine tRNA bound to the ribosomes, but only in the presence of EFT. As such, both GTP and EFT are needed to enhance binding of the amino acid tRNA to ribosomes. This is consistent with our model for elongation, where EFTU and GTP bring amino acid tRNA to the A site of the ribosome. We can see that EFT plays a role in getting the amino acid tRNA into the ribosome, but how does the cell elongate from that peptide? How are polypeptides formed? Ravel was curious about this question and additionally what role this other factor named EFG had. According to the elongation model, after the EFTU step, EFG, along with GTP, translocates the peptidyl, peptidyl tRNA with its mRNA codon to the P site. As such, EFG was essential for polypeptide formation. Ravel designed an experiment that provided evidence for this model. For the second experiment, Ravel utilized washed ribosomes and the addition of the following. 14C um, labeled phenylalanine tRNA, poly-U mRNA, EFT, 
and increasing concentrations of GTP. The test condition was the presence of EFG. Polyphenol alanine production was measured, measured by the method of acid precipitation, specifically with TCA, trichloroacetic acid. In the presence of heat, the phenylalanine tRNA will, would be hydrolyzed, but not the polyphenylalanine. Instead, the polypeptide would bind to the nitrocellulose. For the results of the second experiment, Rav reported the following. Alone, addition of EFT did not increase the ribosome's ability to produce polyphenylalanine as demonstrated by the blue line here. Even with increasing amounts of GTP, there were no significant changes to polypeptide formation. As such, something else must be needed. Ravel decided to test whether or not EFT was the one responsible for, responsible for polypeptide formation. EFT was added along with EFG, and a significant increase in polymerization occurred. EFG must have some role in polypeptide formation. So what can we conclude from these experiments? Well, we can tie these data to the current model of elongation, which has three steps. First, from the first experiment, we saw that EFT enhanced binding of the amino acid tRNA to the ribosomes, especially with increasing amounts of GTP. This data is consistent with the elongation model. EFTU, along with GTP, binds amino acid tRNA to the A site of the ribosome. In addition, we can conclude that GTP binding is important for EFT function. In the second experiment, polymerization of PolyU required EFG in the presence of high concentrations of GTP. This data is consistent with the third step of elongation. EFG, along with GTP, translocates the growing peptidyl tRNA with its mRNA codon to the P site. Um, that's all I have for today, so thank you for watching this video, and go blue!